Hi, my name is Mansi, and um, I'm the creator of Happy Feet Home Foundation. It's a non-profit organization based in Mumbai, in India. Happy Feet Home works with children who live with life-limiting, life-shortening illnesses. Most of the children who come to Happy Feet Home either have HIV or thalassemia or cancer. What we do with children here is basically what any one of you would do for children in your homes. Whatever we do for children in our homes. So whether it is taking care of their education, their health, their medication, their interests, their happiness, um, their mental health, everything, everything that you can ever think about is what we provide children at Happy Feet Home. And why do we do that? Because um, we work with children who've come from marginalized communities. We work with children who've lived every minute of their lives thinking about what if they were to die? You know, how many of us think like that? Um, we work with children who've always been closeted because of the illness. And these are illnesses they got at birth from their parents. Um, we work with children who have not received the childhood they deserve, the childhood which is their right. We work with children who are scared of making friends. We work with children who are not sure if they have the right to fall in love or to dream of having a family. Or even when they came to us, they did not even know that they can have something as simple as aspiration, as simple as a dream. Because when we asked them, what do you want to be? They actually had no answer. So I used to work with this organization that um, sheltered children who were on active treatment for cancer. Um, so typically these children used to live with us for about, about between anything between a year to three. Um, and we lost one such boy, uh, one such boy, he was 16 and he died. Uh, he stayed away from his family for two years. And when he died, his father did not have the money to pay the last outstanding bill at the hospital that was about 60,000 rupees and um, so the hospital wouldn't release the dead body of a 16 year old boy. Um, we wanted to help the father give a dignified end to his son and when we approached the social work department what I heard was something that I'll never forget and that was the lady at the counter said 60,000 is not a big amount. I can just make one phone call and I'll have 10 donors who'll come to give that money. But no one is going to give that money for this boy because he's a lost cause. And that didn't go too well with me because he cannot be a lost cause, you know? Like she said, there's no impact in helping someone who's dead. And for me, there is a lot more impact in helping someone who's dead because you're helping that family restore the dignity. You're helping the father give a goodbye to a son that he's just lost. You're helping the mother mourn the death of her son and not worry about the money that she has to pay the hospital. And that is impact in itself. And, and I also see around that there are several organizations. There is an organization for every cause. There's an organization for every problem. And a lot of people out there to help, but a lot of people not out there to help when, you know, we're saying that probably this child is dying and we need to do something. And it's not only about making one wish come true, right? It's about ensuring that for as long as you live, you live with respect, you live with knowing that you have the right to live and not always thinking about death. So there were a lot of these things that came across and that's when I thought, this is what I want to do. I want to live, I want to work with children who may not have any survival hopes. I want to work with children who, who have an illness which does not have a cure. And only because they have the right to live and they have the right to equality and the right to all the opportunities that we can provide. We started Happy Feet Home in 2014. Since then, we, uh, we work with a government hospital in Mumbai. 
and since 2014 till now we have um, over 600 children that we have worked with there are about 250 children living with HIV 250 children living with thalassemia and around 100 plus children with cancer more than half of our um, children are girls So we work with we work with the government hospital in Mumbai, and these children are registered patients there. Uh, so we work closely with the hospital, and the hospital typically uh, refers a child to Happy Feet Home. Uh, children that they think are in need of 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 our intervention, or a lot of times it's like word of mouth, you know, like one child bringing the other one. Um, we have a couple of models in which we work so one of it is a daycare center where children come and spend the entire day with us so that's like from morning till evening um, we have another uh, the hospital outreach program where the team from happy feet home goes into the hospital and spends time um, doing activities um, providing counseling um, to the parents and with the children who've come to the hospital either for blood transfusion or for the medication. And the third thing we have is uh, a shelter where we've housed children right now. We have 22 children living with us, um, all between the age of 4 to 21. So when we think about HIV, we pretty much think about it as the end of life. And we think that there's no scope, there's no survival, and it's a big taboo. Um, but that's actually not the case, you know, and, and that was an eye opener for me as well, because like once I was at the hospital and I was talking to the doctor who treats these children, and she said that if these children took care of their medication, if they took care of their nutrition and if they took care of their mental health, they will die of an old age. They'll die because of old age and not because of HIV, not because of AIDS. And that was quite an eye opener for me, right? Because a lot of us in our head have already switched them off and we think, but they're just going to die and there's no future. What are they even going to do? But the thing is, I think we are killing them prematurely and that's not fair and that is when the shift happened in our organization as well. Children with HIV have to take these really really strong medicine every single day and and they have to be very strict with the adherence of it right so if it is a 12 hour gap it has to be taken at the hour at the 12th hour or 24 hours. At some point after a few years, the medicine is going to stop impacting them and it is not going to have the effect it is supposed to have and that is when they go from a line 1 to a line 2 and then from a line 2 to a line 3 of treatment. But if they have their nutrition taken care of and their mental um, health taken care of along with the medication, this can be prolonged so they can have a fairly comfortable, easy life. But the thing is, we as society don't give them the chance to live that life. So, so thalassemia is um, a condition where your body does not generate hemoglobin. There are three types of that there is there is a thalassemia major there is thalassemia minor and there is thalassemia intermedia thalassemia major is when your body actually just does not produce hemoglobin and that is, hemoglobin is what you actually need when you have to even get up from your bed and get going for your day and imagine not having that in your body at all you'll not be able to stand we've had children collapse literally collapse because they don't have strength to even stand up so Children with thalassemia major have to undergo blood transfusion every 15 days, which means they need to get somebody else's blood inside their body. How do you get thalassemia is people who have thalassemia minor might have deficiency of hemoglobin in their body, but the body does produce hemoglobin. It's just not um, the required amount. 
and that is when they might be a little weaker not as energetic they might get tired a little sooner than us but they have normal lives now if i am a thalassemia minor patient and if i get married to another person who's thalassemia minor as well our lives are going to be all right but there's a high probability that the child that we reproduce might turn out to be thalassemia major so all the children that we work with who are who have thalassemia major are basically coming from parents who are thal minors um it is as simple as getting a blood test done and you can know whether you are thal minor or not children uh, with thalassemia major they undergo blood transfusions every 15 days which means for every 15 days they're opening up their bodies to all sorts of infections we've had children who've gotten hiv because of blood transfusion um and every time they have a blood transfusion which means they they need to take a day off from their school or college twice a month every single month and every time they have the blood transfusion they go pale they kind of even turn blue they start shivering they have fever they have rashes all over their body and we don't know what all infections they are even inviting inside their body there's no guarantee ravi i mean that's that's that depends on person to person you can be on one medication for like 10 years 15 years so which means by the time you reach the third cycle it's like what 45 50 years right and then then there are children like sanjana who actually went from line a uh, line 1 to line 2 in like 2 years you know so again it all depends on how how regularly you're taking your medication that's the only thing they need to do and 12 hour meaning 12 hours so if you've taken your medicine at 8 in the morning you have to eat at 8 in the evening otherwise even if you're even if you're like 5 minutes late which means you're giving your body you're giving the hiv virus in your body 5 minutes to multiply they're multiplying in that 5 minutes right so you have the adherence has to be like just that that strong the children are educated enough in fact it's it's really amused not even amusing it's like shocking sometimes when little children four year old children five year old children they know their medications they know their schedules they know the names of their medications they know what time they have to eat what and and how many medicines and sometimes it is not sometimes every time every time we see the children taking their medicine it breaks our heart because it's not one pill children are taking like they literally they literally have like 6 to 7 pills in one go right and we i think to myself a lot of times like you know a lot of us give up on treatment the moment we start feeling better but for these children that's not the answer whether it is whether it is children with hiv whether it is children with thalassemia or with cancer they know that they if they have to survive they have to take these medicines children with thalassemia have to take a medicine which will keep their iron in check that will keep their calcium in check that will keep like you know their their blood supply fine there are like it's not only the, the Uh, blood transfusion is not the end of the treatment there's just so much more that goes every time a child a child with thalassemia minor once in his life or her life has to undergo a surgery for the spleen because the spleen starts to enlarge and then there are deposits on various organs of their body so there is there's a problem with their heart then there's a problem with the liver there's a problem with their intestines there's a problem with their kidneys and at some point the organs start to fail and that is when we know that they are pretty much reaching their end because now the organs are starting to give up
we have we have quite a few in fact we recently lost we recently lost a boy um with thalassemia and i think he had an inkling that his time is up and he kept saying that you know give me water for one last time because after that i'll never have a demand or and he said that my legs are paining can someone please massage it and he kept asking for a couple of his friends because he's like i want to hug them for one last time and i don't think i'm going to come back to the center because i think this is my last day here and it's scary because we didn't even know what was happening with him like he just complained of a stomach ache and oh god give me a minute please I know it's hard to to accept you know when things like this happen. No, I think with Nihal, I'm just upset because I just undergone the surgery, right? And that's like I think four or five days after that, Nihal fell sick, and he fell sick in the night, and he died the next evening. I got to know about his condition just one hour before he died. So Krishna calls me like at seven, and he's like, uh, "Nihal's very unwell and he's critical, and he might not make it." And I'm like, "That cannot be true, you know." So I'm, I'm like, actually, I heard that, and I started crying in my house, and I'm telling my mom, you know what, this boy is not well, and I have to go. And she's like, "Are you crazy? You've just gotten out of uh, surgery yourself, and..." you want to travel like 45 minutes to get to the center and i threw a fit in my house and i was like if you don't let me go i'm stepping out of your house and i'm never coming back but like i went but you know like the 45 minute journey took me almost 2 hours because my driver couldn't go beyond like 20 and 30 and i couldn't see him i didn't see him and i have i think i have like this tiny little grudge with my team because they should have told me you know and it's not fair that they left it uh, i mean you don't tell me one hour before the child is dying very badly very very badly because you know it's um no matter what we do for them right i mean life at happy feet home is is happy and uh, they they are they're full of energy if you walk into the center you'll never feel that you've worked with children or you are meeting children with an illness you'll think you're meeting children from your neighborhood like regular children and and they also have now come to a place where they f- they forgotten about their illness but every time a child passes away that's again that rude shocking reminder that you're sailing in the same boat this can be your future um now they are okay with their medication they are they are they don't have an issue with it but a lot of children had a problem even taking their hiv medicines because you know no matter what you do the entire day and you may you may like you know go for your music lessons or your dance lessons or like you know have might start having a dream about your future but in the night before bed when you are opening that bottle and taking that pill that's again a reminder that you know this is your reality and this is what you supposed to do for the rest of your life and that hits them i am assuming not anymore but it has been very difficult for them so it's it's quite hard when we lose a child that happy feet home because um honestly we believe that if there is a child in happy feet home they won't die they won't they won't die an untimely death they will they will have a chance to live a full life no matter how long or short that is they would have the chance to experience life in an every beautiful aspect of it
so let me start so there was this one time when um we we have we started having these children regularly we never thought children will come regularly right and then we started having these children come in every single day some of them would travel for like half an hour one hour even to come to the center some children did not have money to come every day they would actually walk for an hour or two just to get to the center and then one day we just happened to ask them what do you want to do when you grow up and they didn't have an answer not none of them had an answer nobody and they questioned back saying can we be something can i i don't think i can have a dream and and we were like you definitely can have a dream and that is when we started our education and vocation program and today 6 years after that question we have a saurabh who is doing a one year program with shamak dawars institute which is one of the most prestigious institutes of dance in india and he's doing a one year program which is one of the most prestigious programs of shamak dawars that he's ever offered and the most difficult program to get into as well we have reshma who's completed a one year course in fashion designing we have soham who's trained to be a dj we have a shubham who's completed his degree in social work um we have ram who's an aspiring photographer and he wants to learn photography so and, and we have an aspiring travel blogger and a chef and fashion designers musicians even um and yeah this is where they are going they are all happy to spread their wings and they are ready to fly covid covid took away the comfort that our children had in knowing that they can step inside happy feet home whenever they felt like most of our children haven't been able to come and we see that because they don't come and they don't get the nutrition that we provide they don't get the right medication that we've provided or even the mental health support that we provide we've seen that impact their bodies and their health um covid has been extremely difficult to us in terms of funding we've lost a couple of our major funders because um you know they decided to use that money in covid relief and it has also somewhere crippled us in terms of like reaching out to more children or more hospitals like we right right before covid we were in contact we were in talks with two major hospitals in the city to get con- to get connected and and that actually stopped so i'm i'm extremely proud of my team because one we've stuck together for 7 years like really thick as thieves but we we have sadhna she's a nurse but she's pretty much everything in the center right so she cooks for the children and she manages our accounts and she manages a lot of logistical work for us and with that she recruits children for happy feet home and she takes care of every child's medical need and it is not only just limited to hiv thalassemia and cancer it's related to someone having dandruff in their hair to uh, dry skin or like you know just a made small wound so sadhna takes care of all of it we have a rajshri who's pretty much like the mother figure in the organization where she's basically our go to person in terms of like she's a bridge between the communities that the children come from and us so she's the one who's constantly in touch with all the families she's constantly knowing what's going on in each and every home and along with that you'll see her oiling the girl's hair and like giving a head massage to the boys and we have a shahid who's like the cool dude of the organization because every child is like pretty inspired by him everyone wants to be like him dress like him be on social media like him but he he's basically the guy who goes to the hospital and does all these activities with the children he's also our admin guy and 
um, he's he's our main source uh, in terms of children with cancer. We have Krishna, who's the choreographer, but along with that, he's the one who's in charge of the shelter, and he's he's the one who's kept everyone safe and sound, and given us a sound sleep the entire COVID period. Um, we have a Shubhang, who's actually one of the children that. we worked with and now she's taken over the role of being a caregiver for the girls at the center um there is jarna who's my go to person with every issue that i ever have she is the ceo of happy feet home but more than that she's just like such a beautiful friend and like the most loved didi by all the children in the center um we have farisha and manisha and um geeta and hasina and rizwana who basically ensure that our centers constantly spick and span and the children have the most healthy and the most tasty meals every day and we have saloni who who's basically like like a taskmaster when it comes to mental health and she's the one who's constantly reminding us to take care of ourselves and to breathe and to understand and to have compassion and to reflect it's 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 a very difficult question actually but I think we don't say that out loud a lot we feel it but our jobs are very difficult like very very difficult i mean i haven't slept in days i ever since we have children staying with us it's basically this whole fear or uh, concern of keeping them safe to ensure that they are sleeping peacefully at night that they have food in their plate every day that they don't get hurt that they don't cry um that they are taking their medicine on time and i have i have 16 cctv cameras in our center and i'm practically constantly watching that i'm literally counting children even at 3 o'clock in the morning and and it's crazy it's very difficult but also because for every parent who's watching this you will know how your life changes after you have a child and how protective you become of your children um we've just become so protective for 22 children in the center um thankfully we have a therapist and we are all everyone at the center has to see the therapist that's that's like a good practice that we have and it it brings some sanity back in our lives but i think we'll all be in a much better space if more people came forward to take care of more such children we had more happy feeds in happy feeds we had more happy feeds for happy feeds to go to if we had more people being more open about everybody and it's not only about children with illnesses right it's about children with any any problem it's about equality it's about gender it's about everything and we had if we had more and more people being more and more accepting and open i think a lot of burden from all of us would just shift and it would be distributed and we will all have a much easy and happy and comfortable life